now to be more flexible and over is is not too bad it's 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 doing well in terms of uh, growth and uh, especially in employment growth you would see that uh, for the last uh, uh, three years um, employment has been uh, growing at around two percent our surveys also show that there's increase in uh, uh, private sector sales and and so um, the economy is is growing uh, but of course there's a lot of challenges that we we need to deal with as well um, thank you for the last two speakers I think they've done a fantastic job uh, they've um, described the, the IMF program that we are we are into and so that makes my job very easy for the Bank of Papua New Guinea we focused on two main reforms and the two are uh, one is the monetary policy uh, reform and basically to ensure that the the transmission is improved so that the policy rate when the governor announces announces it on a monthly basis it should filter through to the market rates that would impact on uh, um, lending and deposits and eventually affect uh, domestic activity so that's the link that is very weak and so this reform is basically trying to improve that there's a lot of excess liquidity that's uh, uh, that's that actually uh, uh, is is the is the main reason if you like behind uh, this uh, weakness in the transmission uh, the second reform is the exchange rate reform I believe uh, Rafik has already covered that um, we we maintained a an exchange rate that is overvalued over the over the last if you like last last 10 years and the bank has been struggling to meet uh, outstanding orders in the uh, in the market uh, and so it was necessary and important that part of the program is that we need to allow Kina to be more flexible and over time we should be able to reach a point where Kina is fully convertible uh, some of the things that we've we've implemented um, uh, last year we've implemented the uh, the the fixed rate full allotment auction and we tie that rate to the policy rate so when the governor actually announces the rate that rate is applied on this auction so when the banks come and uh, 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 in that auction they actually use that rate to, to to deposit their funds and we are hoping that that would transmit uh, uh, to the domestic other domestic interest rates um, and of course it would have a positive impact on the um, credit growth and the other interest rates as well um, so that was implemented last year um, one of the uh, things that we also have been doing in the last uh, few uh, few few months since uh, March we've been actually tightening we've raised the 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 Kina facility rate we've also also increased the reserve requirement where we soaked, soaked up a lot of liquidity from the from the system um, to be able to have that uh, policy uh, uh, the ex sorry the monetary policy uh, work in, in terms of feeding through to the uh, domestic market um, Uh, moving on to the exchange rate um, you would see from the slides that the conditions in the FX market has actually improved uh, we used to have uh, outstanding orders um, uh, you know going back to like uh, two months or more um, even if you even if you go back to uh, 2023 it was around four four months uh, and that time it took a long time for uh, for the uh, importers to actually have access to the FX uh, that has changed quite dramatically uh, it has already come down to around one month a lot of orders have been met uh, uh, within the span of one month um, you see a spike there in in July and, and August because of the current crawl that we are, uh, are doing and everybody knows that the Kina is depreciating there is front-loading of import orders because they want to get a better rate than 
you know, six months down the line when the kina becomes weaker and they're not able to get uh, the effects that they, they, would want to, they would want to have. Um, the reserves um, are at around uh, 3 billion, 3.7. Um, and uh, our intervention is also constrained by the IMF limit as well. Uh, so um, this, for, for, the, for, the, for the BPNG's intervention, it's, it's also limited to that extent. So that's why we cannot really come in and clear the market. We are doing it on a monthly basis through our interventions. Um, these are some of the benchmarks that have been set uh, by the IMF program, and uh, uh, I must say that we were able to meet all those benchmarks in terms of the net foreign reserves. Um, in, in March, the target was uh, 2.5 billion. Uh, we had about 2.7, so we, we were above that, uh, that limit. Um, in terms of our, our um, exposure to the government, uh, it was set at 2.4. That's how much we can lend to the government for, for its uh, fiscal operations. Um, we only lent 1.75. Um, in terms of the, uh, the targets on our intervention, um, we've, we've been above the target. Um, actually, this year we've increased our intervention to around um, 125 million US uh, on a monthly basis. But we've been doing weekly auctions as well. We've moved away from monthly to weekly auctions and that provided a lot of liquidity in the FX market. And the, and the you know, companies are saying that this, or rather banks as well, are saying that uh, uh, liquidity in the FX market has, has improved and the orders are frequently met. Um, domestic inflationary uh, condition. Um, it's uh, a bit surprising when we, when we had the uh, June actual figures where inflation was 0.1%. Um, the underlying are still high at around 4-5%. Um, what you see there is that eventually when, when the uh, bitter nut prices um, uh, recover to normal trends by December, you will realize that the underlying uh, inflation will now push the head, head, headline to around that level. Uh, so our, our forecast for uh, inflation for this year still stands at 5%. Uh, you can see on the, on the other slide, on the, um, the, the contributions of tradable and non-tradable, you would see that a lot of goods that we consume is imported. And this is where our issue is. We are importing a lot, but we are not producing enough exports. And because of the overvaluation of the Kina, you are not supporting the growth in the export sector. So these are some of the uh, reforms that needs to be done and corrected so that it sets the foundation for growth to happen uh, going forward. Okay, this is my last slide. Um, that's just an inflation fo forecast. Um, we, we expect inflation to subside by 2026. Uh, the program is, is for three years. It should end somewhere in 2026. Um, and uh, we are hoping that uh, some of the you know, big developments in the resource sector, uh, if, they would, if they can be able to come on stream, and we have a lot of inflows of direct investment, as well as uh, exports, um, then we should, then that should, to some extent, stabilize the kin or even reverse the trend, and that's what uh, Rafik was referring to. Um, the overvaluation of the kina, it's it's a, it's like a moving goalpost. We 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 calculate that every six months. The next one will be in um, in December, um, when when IMF will do their own calculations. We do ours as well, but the. Kina overvaluation is around 5 to 10%. It also depends on what sort of models you, you use. Um, I know um, uh, Professor uh, Martin has uh, done some work uh, on that as well some, some years back. Uh, and 
the bank is also collaborating with him. Um, uh, we, want to, we want to engage and see how others also calculate this overvaluation. But this is what the IMF and the bank uh, came up with in terms of where the overvaluation is. So that de de determines the crawl. And the crawl is, uh, is, is staggered and, and uh, if you follow the, uh, how it is depreciating, you can be able to tell uh, how much it would be at the end of the year. I think the 8.5% that, that came out on the papers, I think that's a little bit too high. Um, that would not happen. Um, we, we are uh, very much in control of how much we want the Kina to uh, depreciate by. Um, but of course, you know, we are, we are also mindful and concerned about the inflationary impact that it's having um, on the economy and es especially average Papua New Guineans. Um, and hopefully this, these reforms will be able to, um, you know, bring us to this, um, if you like, you know, an equilibrium uh, position where Kina can be convertible. So when you go to the, uh, to the FX market or to the commercial banks, you wouldn't stay there for more than a week or so. Uh, and, and, and that's the reform that needs to be, needs to be undertaken. I think um, uh, why we held since 2014, uh, the bank uh, in the previous management decided to keep the uh, exchange rate overvalued is because of uh, price stability concerns. And that was very clear. And it's part of our mandate. But in doing so, we created something. Uh, imports were not able to be, to be met adequately over the last uh, 10 years. Thank you very much. Just to give you a snapshot of the state of the economy, the economy is not, is, is not too bad. It's, it's, it's doing well in terms of uh, growth and uh, especially in employment growth, you would see that